Tree beard, nothing but tree beard. Do 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 do. Tree beard. Oh, hello YouTube. Today I'm the Naughty Librarian. I am bringing you my bookshelf tour part two. I'm really excited to bring you part two of the bookshelf tour. I'm so happy you guys liked part one. I didn't know if it was gonna be interesting or it was gonna flop. I thought it could go either way. I'm glad you guys enjoy it. So we're starting behind the scenes before we move on to, you know, the shelves you see in all the videos because these ones aren't gonna be as much of a surprise. So this is like my tippy tippy top shelf. I am on a ladder very high. And this is kind of where I keep the stuff that like, I'm not gonna pull off my shelf ever for any reason, but I, I kind of want it still. So over here I have like some Anne Rice stuff, I have Vampire Lestat, Queen of the Damned, Witching Hour, and Violin. I have not read any of these, but I feel like I should own them. They should be part of my collection. And you know, Queen of the Damned is like a movie I'm complete trash for, so I want the book. Whatever. Um, then I have this one. I got it at a library book sale. It's really cool. It's a Tolkien bestiary, so it's all the like the beasts and magical creatures from Tolkien books very cool. First edition, I think it's from the 40s. Super dope. And then I have this little um, Han Christian Andersen's Fairy Tales, another really, really old book. Library book sales are dope. You find cool stuff there. I have this Omnibus. It's a series of unfortunate events, books one, two, and three. I got it at a random secondhand store, and like, I don't foresee myself ever particularly reading it, but I just want to have it. And then I have another Omnibus here for books of Ember, so like City of Ember. The People of Sparks and The Prophet of Yonwood. So it's three books of that series all together. I have book one of The Chronicles of Narnia, which is The Magician's Nephew. So that's even before Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It's a prequel, I believe. Aragon. Oh, I have one more by um, Anne Rice. It is The Claiming of Sleeping Beauty. And it is the first of the classic erotic trilogy. <laughs> so Anne Rice smut. I've been meaning to want to read that because I want to see what Anne Rice does for smut. But um, yeah, so Aragon, I found a library book, so there's no book sleeve on it. That's why it's up here. I don't want to look at it. There's no book sleeve. And then I have um, Sleepy Hollow for the sake of having it. Um, this is the Human Interest Library, Our Country and Romance, Volume 3. I just have it because it's super old. And like, I thought it was a cool looking book. It's like super old. It's like leathery. Just wanted it for the sake that it's cool. Ink card by Cornelia Funke. I haven't read it, but I wanted to own it for the sake of it. I have read The Looking Glass Wars by Frank Bidor, which was actually surprisingly very good, but I read it many years ago, so I don't know if it's like actually good or it was good many years ago and I'm just remembering it fondly. But I have the whole series. And then I have the Odd Thomas series by Dean Koontz. Odd Thomas, surprisingly one of my favorite series. <laughs> I've read the whole thing, it's really funny. Dean Koontz isn't really an author you would think like, oh, Amanda Venture really likes Dean Koontz, but <laughs> I did really, really like this series, so Odd Thomas, he's like an adorable ghost detective. I like it. This is my top shelf underneath the tippy top shelf, and this is kind of also books that like I want to have, but like I'm never going to pick off my shelf very often. So I have like my John Green section, so I'm looking for Alaska, Abundance of Catherines, Paper Towns, Faulkner Stars. I've read everything John Green's written. I just love them. Will Grayson, Will Grayson. Okay, this is like an underrated hit. I love this series. It's with him and David Levithan. They wrote a book together. And then they actually wrote the script because um, basically they're writing a play in this book and they wrote the play and they got the book, both books because I'm a nerd. And then you have Turtles All the Way Down, which is like their most recent release. Very good. They're always good. I have some David Levithan because he wrote a book with Will Grayson. Will Grayson, John Green. Um, so I have some of those books. Nick and Nora, this is the only one I'm keeping with a stupid movie tie-in edition cover. Hate the cover, loved the book, so that's why I'm keeping it. And it's like really old school because like it has like an insert of pictures from the movie. <laughs> like, what, is this a teen magazine? I don't know what's happening, but that's the only one I'm keeping. And then I have this guy, um, he smells like vanilla and It goes on for too long. So yes, this is my Twinkle Magic Monster. I don't know why I have him. I just do. He guards the shelf. And then I have some Kirsten White, Paranormalcy, Supernaturally. There's one more. I think it's called Endlessly is the name of the last book of the series. It's a cute series. Definitely for a younger audience, but very fun. And then I have The Hunger Games. I mean, Suzanne Collins fell off the face of the earth after Hunger Games, but she apparently is writing now a prequel series. 
I, th- I think the iron isn't hot anymore. It's not time to start striking it, but okay. But anyway, Hunger Games, The Twilight Saga. This is my Stephanie Meyer section. Because say what you want about Twilight. They're international mega successes <laughs> because they're well-written. I mean, maybe the story isn't the greatest. Maybe there is problematic content, but you know what? They're written in certain ways that you have to find out what happens next. They're, like, excellent, like, examples of that sort of writing style. So, Twilight. Um, I'm a nerd, and I actually went to the midnight release party for Breaking Dawn, and I was a full adult. (laughs) It was odd that I was there. Um, I even have this one, the little, The Second Life of Brie Tanner. It's a little novella. And I have The Host, which I actually really enjoyed a long time ago. I think if I went back and reread it now, I might not like it, but I did enjoy it when I did read it. And then I have The Chemist, which is her most recent book. This is a book for adults. Surprisingly, I liked it a lot. I thought it was pretty good. So yeah, Stephanie Meyer section. I would read more by Stephanie Meyer if she wrote anything else. This next shelf is like my total middle grade section because it's all of the Percy Jacksons and Rick Riordan series and then her Harry Potter. So this is like my section for it. I have run out of space though. And I know there's going to be more Rick Riordan books, so we'll find out what's going to happen with that. Um, a lot of these I've gotten at, like, library book sales, so a lot of them have gone for very cheap. So I have, like, the Demigod Diaries, um, the Guide to the Greek Gods, which is very PG-rated, because the gods were not that PG-rated. I got some of the, um, what are these? These are graphic novels, got them at library book sales. Percy Jackson series. I have the Heroes of Olympus series. I have the Trials of Apollo series. <laughs> I have um, the Crane Chronicle series, book one and two. I think this is a duology. There might be another book in it, but I think it was a duology. And then I have Magnus Chase um, and the Gods of Asgard, that series. I have the first two books. I still need to get book three, but I haven't read first books either, so who knows. And then over here is my Harry Potter section, my very well-loved editions of Harry Potter. And then this is um, Sharon Needles, the drag queen, but witch, so hey, this is the section. (laughs) And then I have a chocolate frog candle. It smells like chocolate. And I forget who makes this. Uh, Happy Piranha. So it's a chocolate frog candle. And then I have a little, I don't know if I can get this in there, but um, it is a little vial of gillyweed from the Triwizard Tournament. So that's like my little Harry Potter merch item. And then I have this, um, I have my stand and I have my Goblet of Fire candle. And it is a fairy loot exclusive. Um, I don't know who made it, but it does smell like fresh baked bread. <laughs> it, allegedly it does. Oh, there we go. It does smell like, it smells like, like chocolate French toast. I don't know. It smells good. I like it. So there's that. And these are my very well-loved editions of Harry Potter. They're all paperback. They're beat to shit. Cause like I read the shit out of them <laughs> back in the day. This is like one thing. I think I would want to get like a really nice box set of, of like all hardcover, super nice editions. Like that's something I really want to get a box set of. So yeah, these ones are my beat up copies, but I do want to get a nice edition someday. And then this one I found at a library book sale, surprisingly. And look at it, guys. It's actually the first edition. Ah, I'm so excited. It's my favorite book of the series. It's the first edition of it. The cover is so weird. I love it. So that was kind of really cool. So this is like my middle grade shelf. This is kind of my arc shelf, is where I keep arcs. I mean, I keep arcs in other places too, but I wanted to have like a space for them, so this is my arc shelf and other books. Um, Over here, I remember seeing a lot of controversy about this one, The Black Witch, but I found it at a library book sale. It's the arc of it. Haven't read it. I've heard lots and lots of controversy though, so I don't know. I still have it on my shelf. Maybe one day I'll pick it up. Who knows? Some of them are old. Like, I have this one, uh, Vengeance Road by Aaron Bowman, so there's that one. This is, might be one of the oldest arcs I have. I found an arc of Hemlock Grove by Brian, um, who is this, McCready? Brian McCready. And I saw it at a library book sale, I did not know it was the arc, but then I saw this on the corner, I was like, oh, it's an arc of it. That's so cool, from 2012. And I really, really like the Netflix show. I know it's trash, but I love it, so I was really happy I found that one. And then this is an arc, but I do want to read it come Christmas because it is Winter Spell by Claire Legrand. It is a dark retelling of the Nutcracker. I love me some Claire Legrand and I want like a cool dark holiday story. So that's going to happen later in the year. And then we have like older books. These are kind of more books I think I got in 2018, Y'all West. So I have Ship It by Britta London, Empress of All Seasons. I still need to read that one. Grim Lovelies. 
Need to read that one. <laughs> Rabbit and Robot. That one's super weird, but has a really cool cover. Like, it's so cool of a cover, and I love it, so I need to read it, but I haven't done it yet. And um, some more from 2018, Sacrifice Box, which does have like a creepy cool cover, and it's supposed to be kind of Stranger Things-y, because I, like, look at that font. This is Stranger Things font. Completely. Haven't read it. I get these arcs and I don't read them. <laughs> That's a problem. Um, this one by Casey West. Um, I do want to read something by Casey West because she writes these like YA rom-coms and I want to try one out because they might be very good or they might be very for much a younger audience. I'm not sure how they're going to work out yet. This one was a find. Oh my gosh. I really, really want to read Not Even Bones. It's like a girl who cuts up monsters and sells her organs on the black market. What? I love it. I want to read that a lot. This one my friend Bethany sent to me. It is an ARC version of Poison, Dark, and Drowning by Jessica Kluse. This came out in 2017. Oh my gosh, I love that series, and she found an ARC for me. She's a wonderful person. These ones are kind of all from 2019, Y'all West, so I've been over those in another video, but um, I have I Love You So Mochi by Sarah Kuhn. I have Scavenge the Stars. This one I'm very fascinated by because it's a gender-swapped Count of Monte Cristo. I have Surface Breaks, that's Little Mermaid, um, House of Salt and Sorrows. I think this one is a retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses, I believe. And then you have Wilder Girls, which just came out. And this one had like a crazy exclusive Y'all West cover that comes off and you have the regular cover. But um, I am obsessed with this book right now. Ooh, um, I totally want to read it. I'm obsessed. I want to read that so bad. Kingdom of Souls. It just is um, Witch Doctor's African-inspired way into it. This one I'm dying to read, Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahirin. It is um, like 16th century France and witches. I love it. More fantasy stories. I get a lot of fantasy arcs. I guess I like those best. This one I'm super fascinated by. I love the cover, There Will Come a Darkness. It seems kind of like it would be similar to The Smoke Thieves by Sally Green, which I really enjoyed, so I want to read that. Tenth Girl. I've been meaning to read this because I was supposed to buddy read it with people and then I didn't do it because <laughs> I ran out of time. And then these aren't arcs, but this is where they are because they're kind of close to my other Sarah J. Maas books. And this is the Court of Thorns and whatever series. So Thorns and Roses, Miss and Fury, Wings and Ruin, Frost and Starlight. These two are actually the UK editions. I got them at a um, discount bookstore. I was like, oh, fines, yes! So these ones are US editions, these are UK editions, and I just have like a little section. This next shelf is kind of my contemporary romance shelf, and then I have my owl snow globe. I don't care, it's not Christmas, I love that snow globe. Um, over here is more like suspense, so I have contemporary suspense stories whole bunch of different stuff. Um, I did keep a couple Lori Foster books. I got rid of a lot of Lori Foster books recently, so but I kept a couple because they're in like really good shape. Um, some of these are ARCs. Some of these I've gotten from the authors. I got like these from Helen K. Diamond. She's a local author, but like writes for Avon. So those are kind of cool. I enjoy those a lot. Um, J.C. Burton. Okay, I'm gonna pull this one out. So J.C. Burton, I've read a lot of her contemporary sport romances. And I didn't know she wrote like a like a one about killers and suspense and stuff. So I bought that one at a library book sale because I was like, ooh, okay, let's see what she does with that. Then these ones are just like larger ones that I couldn't fit on my other romance shelf, so they go here because I had a little bit extra space. Um, Wallbanger, Alice Clayton. It's um, it's very dirty. <laughs> I liked it. It was fun. It was like a cute little rom rom com. I have The Wedding Day by Jasmine Guillory, which I enjoyed but I do feel like it's overhyped, you know, like everyone loved it to bits, but I was like, it was all right. Like it wasn't the best thing I've ever read, if I'm being honest with myself. And then Wishing for Us, um, this one isn't that great of a book, but it is the arc and I want it from the author, so it's signed. And I was really into Sydney Landon for a while, so there you go. By the way, speaking of Sydney Landon, this is one of my favorite rom-coms I've ever read. It is hysterically funny. It has good smut. It's great. I love this book to pieces, and I don't have anyone else who's read it. I haven't talked to anyone else who's read this, so. It's called No Denying You. It's part of this Danvers series she wrote. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> Please, people, read it. It's really funny. And then um, I have some stuff by Alicia Rye, because I really like this series. It'll, like, 
histrionics drama. It's like soap opera, straight up soap opera. Love it. Want to read it. I got these by Jessica Lemon because I've read different books by Jessica Lemon and these ones are kind of like billionaires and the other ones weren't, but I want some Jessica Lemon on my shelf because I do enjoy her work. And then like all of this is like my massive Jill Shalvis section because I basically just buy Jill Shalvis books whenever I find them at library book sales, which happens fairly regularly. So I've got pretty much like this whole um, series. I forget what it's called right now. Um, let's see if it says it on here one, on one of these. Oh, Heartbreaker Bay. Yeah, I have like the whole Heartbreaker Bay series. I love it. Um, I think I'm probably gonna read Trouble with Mistletoe for Christmas because it's such a Christmassy book. I love it. And then over here, I have more. This one, I kind of wanted it to be more like small town kind of section. So we have like Just One of the Groomsmen, Nothing But Trouble. These ones are both small town romances. These ones are cowboys, Wyoming Fierce, Wyoming Strong, Lone Rider, all cowboys, but none of them are wearing chaps, okay? I don't enjoy seeing people in chaps, they're ugly. I'm just gonna say it, I don't fuck with chaps. And then more contemporary romance. This is also a contemporary romance series by Gina Showalter, who is known basically for her paranormal romance. She does write contemporary on occasion, and this series, I actually kind of really enjoyed it. I think it's called the original Heartbreaker series. It takes place in a small town in like Oklahoma that's like claim to famous strawberries. It's so sweet, but like it's actually really, really smutty. It's like very smutty. I recommend. Then you have um, these, I got this at a library book sale by Nicole Chase, Suddenly Royal and Reluctantly Royal. And I'm like, sometimes I just want a royal romance. So I grabbed those. And then these ones, I don't know why I have because they look terrible. They shouldn't be on my shelf. They have such bad covers. Like, it's a terrible cover, right? <laughs> it's terrible. It looks like a bad independent theater production that your friend's in and you have to go see it. It's so bad. I can't. Maybe, yeah, these might get, actually. They're not getting thrown out right now, but those might actually get on hold, actually. Okay. Changing position so we get light. <laughs> this next shelf is getting towards the bottom. But it's kind of, um... Like, I had multiple ideas for this shelf. Some of it's contemporary, some of it's very much fantasy. It's just kind of a meetup zone. So I have some more fantasy stuff, sci-fi stuff. I have this Brandon Sanderson book here. I actually found the arc of the first book, which I thought was pretty cool. Library book sales are dope. So I have that, and I have Aurora Rising, because I don't have any more space with the other books, so it has to go somewhere else. I wish this, like, bookshelves were unlimited. <laughs> I could just fit as many books as I want in one shelf. And I have We Hunt the Flame. I'm dying to read this. I, I just need to find the time, because it's going to happen soon. I'm obsessed with it. I want to read it. Then I have some books that, like, I've gotten from friends. And over here is kind of like my contemporary section a bit. They're all kind of, like, in the same color, you know, pattern. But um, this one, Way to Gain the Walk of Shame, I have no idea what it's about. It's been on my shelf forever. Never read it. Maybe I should get rid of that one. I don't know. But I got The Bells. I have all these books by Brandi Colbert because I actually really, really like Brandi Colbert books. She has, like, really good writing style. Then I have some Nicola Yoon. Uh, my one book by Sarah Dess and I read and enjoyed. It's really, like, for a much younger audience, but it's, like, it was fun. It's whatever. All right. I am back. <laughs> I had lipstick all over my face, apparently. <laughs> anyway, um... This one! I've been wanting to read this! A Study in Charlotte. I've heard amazing things about it. It's like a Sherlock Holmes YA retelling kind of thing. I want to read it. I haven't had time because um, I'm a monster and I own books I have not read. I have this little section by Jennifer Lynn Barnes that's a cactus, which is also a pen! I read this series, it's the Natural series, and I really enjoyed it. And then whenever I find something from her, I just try to get them at library book sales. So I have read some of this. And then I have like um, a Cindy Williams Chima section because she writes all these really cool high fantasy stories. And I do want to read them, I just don't have time ever. But I have a, two different series here represented because I've got them in library book sales. And this is why Treebeard's here, by the way, because I feel like Treebeard kind of goes with all these like fantasy books. <laughs> so he, he lives here. So I have The Novice by Taryn Matharu. I do want to read it. I've heard mixed reviews. Some people love it, some people hate it. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it. I have The Elemental, Fallen Kingdoms. Basically, these three books are the same book to me. Like, I can't tell them apart, really. They seem like the exact same story over and over. And then here, we're moving on to more um, different types of fantasy. I have one by Julie Kagawa. I don't really know why I still have it. I think it's just because I love the cover. Like, the cover's really cool. 
but it's like vampires. It's, it's, a, it's a dystopian vampire story. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it, but I just like the cover, so it's on my shelf. Then I have um, Antigoddess by Kandari Blake. Oh, oh, I didn't know this. This is actually the arc of it. I don't actually look at my books apparently. Okay, so this is the arc from 2013. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. So I do wanna read that, it's like goddesses and stuff. I have Angel Fall. I have the whole series. I have acquired them from Library Book Sales by Susan E. I do want to read it. I know Lauren from the Novel Lush read it and enjoyed it, so I do want to like just binge it one day. Cage, I got it in a subscription box. I don't really know what it's about, but it seems like kind of cool, so I wanted to keep it up just because it seems cool. And then I have some books by Sally Green. Um, the Smoke Thieves, I absolutely loved. I can't wait for the next one. I think it's called The Demon Realm. I just want to read it so bad. And then Half Bad is one of her famous series, but I haven't read it yet. But I have it because I got it at a library book sale. That's this shelf. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain what kind of shelf it is. So this next shelf, it's, um, I think it's mostly sci-fi, I would say, overwhelmingly. Um, so I have over here, I keep them in the corner because I know James Dashner is apparently a sex predator. But I did really enjoy the Maze Runner, so I just keep them in a corner because the work was good. He's a monster. I don't know how to feel about it. Everybody's a monster, apparently. I don't know. Then I have some books by Neil Shusterman. Uh, this is supposed to be a really good series. It's unwind and undivided. I think what it is is like you are entitled to life until a certain age, and then after that your parents can decide whether or not they're gonna harvest your body for parts or not. <laughs> so it's kind of a fucked up dystopian world, but definitely sci-fi. And then I have like the pretty much the whole Monstromologist series by Rick Yancey. Rick Yancey also wrote The Fifth Wave, which is surprisingly fantastic. The movie is shit, but the book is fantastic. And The Monstromologist is pretty fun in general. It's kind of about, it's middle grade, but it shouldn't be because it's actually very terrifying. It's one of the scariest books I've read and I'm a grown ass adult. It's very violent. <laughs> I don't know why they're middle grade, but it's about a young boy who's like a assistant to a monstromologist, which is basically a scientist who hunts monsters. So it's very cool. I just got this one because it was by Rick Yancey and I liked the fifth wave. So I got this one, Extraordinary Adventures of Alfred Kropp. I don't know what it's about, but it's apparently about adventures and Alfred Kropp. Then I have like some more sci-fi stuff. I have Across the Universe by Beth Revis. I read this years ago. And I remember enjoying reading it years ago, but this is one, another one of those books. I think if I went back and I read it now, I probably wouldn't like it. It's one of those. So I have like fond memories, but I don't want to go back and like ruin the memory. <laughs> then I have Starflight, which I did enjoy. I keep meaning to finish the series and then I don't finish it. So who knows? Over here, this isn't obviously, this is not sci-fi, but it, it's going to be here. Some fantasy stuff. So I have Mary Pearson's uh, Kiss of Deception series. It is good. I think Kiss of Deception is odd because it's either all about the romance or it's all about like the cool action points. So I think the beginning of the book was really rough for me, but then by the end of the book, I thought it was really, really good. So it's kind of one of those hit or miss things. And then they have Dance of Thieves, which honestly, look at the cover. Like, look at it. It's gorgeous. I love the cover of this. I haven't read it because I'm a monster, remember? But um, I love the cover. I found this book, uh, Reckless by Cornelia Funke. I think she also wrote Ink Heart. But I got this on sale. And it has like a little, like, uh, what are these things? Like ribbon bookmarks. And it's like written really cool. And like the book, just the aesthetics. It's called The Petrified Flesh. So it sounds like amazing. I have no idea really what it's about, but I love it just for aesthetics. So it's on my shelf. I do kind of want to read it. It's got a great title. Over here, this is my only Tamora Pierce book I own. I do want to read some Tamora Pierce. I know this is like a very much a later book of her works, so I can't start here. I have to read a lot of books before it. So thank you subscribers for telling me that because I got like a lot of like helpful comments. Here um, I have some Megan Kaufman and Amy, no wait, Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. Those are the people. I have a little section for them. I really, really enjoy this series quite a bit. Um, I forget what the series is called right now, but I enjoyed it a lot. It's like a trilogy and it's very spacey and I feel like if you enjoyed uh, Illuminae Files, I feel like some of the basis for the science and like how they space travel and everything is, is set up in this series. I feel like they might be in the same universe actually. It's an odd thing, but I think they're important to read. They're pretty good. Unearthed is um, another one. It's kind of like a Laura Croft story, but I didn't really appreciate it. It wasn't that great. It was all right. Also over here, I have The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon, 
which everyone loves. And I love this cover. It's a gorgeous cover. I love it. I read it and I didn't really like it. I'll be honest. I did not like it that much. I think I need to reread it because maybe I was in a weird headspace and I was like not in the mood to like it. So I think I do need to reread it. There's few books that I feel like I would like but I didn't like when I read. One of them is Bone Season and the other one is Lies of Locke Lamora. Those are the two books I need to reread because I know I probably will really really like them if I reread them but right now I like didn't like them on first read. It's weird right? Then I just have a couple more books here. So I have Want by Cindy Pond and The Diabolic. I got The Diabolic at like a, like a really thrifty store in Kentucky <laughs> and I do want to read it because it's just a cool cover and I've heard good things so I, I need to read it eventually. All right, we're finally at the very bottom shelf. We're almost done. I have too many shelves. Well, no, I don't. I never have too many shelves. There's just a lot of them to film in one video. I have a little Cory Doctoro section with Little Brother. This is a first edition book. And the thing with this book, the one of the main characters, well, not a main character, a tertiary character, their name changes halfway through the book. And everyone's like, who the fuck is this new character? But it's the same character. And it's like a bad editing error. So that's why I, don't want, I want the first edition because that's like a special thing. And then it's sequel Homeland, so I have those both series. But the covers are really cool. It's kind of like um, cyber crime and like kids saving the world. You know, good stuff. These ones are all like kind of like jokey books. Like Catherine Jinks, she writes a lot of books that are like this. They got cool covers. So they have the Reformed Vampire Support Group. They're always like fun covers. I think they're kind of um, tongue in cheek. I don't think they're necessarily for YA, but. YA could read them, you know what I mean? Um, so I have The Abused Werewolf Rescue Group. And then this one, Living Hell! Like, look at that cover. I love it. It's like space aliens and monsters and stuff. I love it. Um, I have Shadow Shaper by Daniel Jose Older. I've been wanting to read this a lot. Um, I think it's a, like a girl who tags and stuff and she has some magic with her art. And I got a library book sale, but I've been wanting to read it, so that's kind of a find. Okay, I have this book by Roald Dahl, you know, like the Phantom Toll Booth, James and the Giant Peach, Roald Dahl, My Uncle Oswald. And it's so weird, like the back, it's like, aside from being thoroughly debauched, strikingly attractive, and astonishingly wealthy, Uncle Oswald is, was the greatest bounder, bon vivant, and fornicator of all time. <laughs> so he wrote like a book about a dirty uncle. I don't know why it exists. I got it just because it's so weird. That's Roll Doll. <laughs> then I have a couple books by Suzanne Young. I met Suzanne Young, so they're both signed. Um, Girls with Sharp Sticks is supposed to be pretty good. It's um, sci fi, kind of Stepford Wivesy, but with YA intent. And I kind of do want to read it. It seems interesting. I love it. She's also giving out pencils with the book. You know, Girls with Sharp Sticks, you sharpen a pencil. It was clever. I appreciate the cleverness. I have Light Years by Cass Morgan. Uh, Cass Morgan wrote The 100, and I got this in like a subscription box. It's not something I picked out for myself. And the thing is, I really enjoyed The 100 TV show, but I did not enjoy the book. It was an odd thing, where I thought the, the, the TV show just did it better. Then I have this whole series by Maria Schneider, and it's like the Poison Study, Magic Study, Fire Study. So it's like um, fantasy, school, magic, doodads and I haven't read them but like I do want to because I got them all at library book sale so it's like a find. This one is super weird it's called Going Bovine it's by Libba Bray and I forget what it's about but it's like um all 16 year old Cameron wants is to get through high school and life in general with a minimal amount of effort but that's before he's given some bad news he's going to die. So I think it's about a kid who gets like um a cow heart transplant and um, I'm interested in it. I think it's just gonna be funny. I just got this series by Emily R. King. It's kind of like the Amazon publishing company. So it's 100th Queen. It's kind of Indian inspired um, fantasy queens saving the world story general doodads. That's why it's kind of on the bottom shelf where I never look at it. And then I don't know why I have these here actually because I do really really like the Dorothy Must Die series by Daniel Page. I love this to bits. It's so good. I love I love Wizard of Oz, and this kind of turns it on its head. We follow Amy Gum, who's the other girl who fell through the tornado from Kansas. And Dorothy is actually the main villain. She's so evil in it. She's like an evil emperor of, of Oz. I love it. It's a really fun series. I will say, 
the first two books of this series, Dorothy Must Die and The Wicked Will Rise. Very good, both of them. And then it kind of starts going downhill a bit. The last two books aren't as good, but the first two books are excellent. I just got this one because it's by Amber Benson. She played Tara on Buffy, and I loved her, and I was like, oh, you wrote a book, and I'm at this book event with you? Oh my gosh, it's Tara from Buffy, and I freaked out, so I had to buy it. I don't even think this is the first book of the series. I think it's like the third book. I don't care. I wanted it. <laughs> and then I just got some more books that are just here for the sake of it. H2O, I do want to read. I think it's like about like toxic rain. And it's like a dystopian world with toxic rain. Black City, I don't even know what this is about, but the cover's dope. I just like it for that reason. Dope cover, I got it for very cheap, for $1.99. So worth it for that. And then Serpent Girl, which is so, so weird of a book. I read it years and years ago, but I really enjoyed it because it's so weird. But also, that's another one. I think if I re went back and reread it now, I would think it's so weird that I wouldn't like it. So another one, that's not the, like the theme of the shelf. I don't know if I'm still gonna like this now. <laughs> and last but not least, the last book of the shelf, Crank by Ellen Hopkins. They're odd books because they're written in prose, but they're also written semi-autobiographically about like her kids who were addicted to drugs. And I did meet her, so this is signed, I think. Signed. And that is it. That is the last shelf. All right, so that was Bookshelf Tour Part 2. Coming up are more books that I unhauled because this was a massive clean-out when I'm filming these. So <laughs> there's a lot more books I have decided to get the heck rid of. So that's coming soon. Let me know in a comment down below. Uh, what was your favorite book that you saw on my shelf? Uh, are there any ones that you are now adding to your TBR list because you saw them on my shelf? Let me know in a comment down below. One last thing before I go. I forgot to mention that I am actually now a affiliate for Book of the Month Club. I am so excited because I've always wanted to try them out. And they're like, hey, do you want to try us out? We'll give you a code. And I was like, yep, yes, I do. <laughs> so in the blurb down below, I have my affiliate code. You can click on it. You get a discount on your first box. They might be nice to me when you click on my link. So if you are interested in Book of the Month Club, particularly in YA, click on my link, use my code. You get a discount. I get some cool stuff. It's awesome. So if you're interested, the, all the info is going to be down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Tree beer, tree beer, tree beer. I am on nobody's side because nobody's on my side. Hobbits.